No, it didn't. Well, that was all for the video. What is up, everybody? As you can tell, I have ruined boar miniatures on purpose, so <laughs> you don't have to. And what I hope is not becoming a reoccurring segment on this channel. But we are back on the road to Necromunda, and there has been some progress, question mark, made for what I'm going to be doing with these dang models. Because it's just 10 guys. It should not be this hard. So, what is the story? At the exciting conclusion of the first Road to Necromunda, uh, I tried imprinting my fingerprints onto models intentionally in order to come up with a cool texture by first wetting the model with some uh, plastic cement to get it all a little bit nice and melted and then trying to make an imprint with my thumb along the model while it was still kind of in its softened state. Initially, it looked pretty good, except that when I tried to apply paint to it, the effect got really messy and pretty unnoticeable for a reason that I think I discovered while well in this part two of the series. But that was not all I have done in the interim. I experimented with a different kind of paint called a color shifting paint as a backup scheme for something that I thought might be a cool effect. And you can take a look at that here. You can see first I tried doing it on top of a dark purple, but the effect was a light purple and it wasn't too clear. It was just kind of like a shiny purple. But I tried the same effect over some dark teal and then got a much more interesting refracting kind of incan not incandescent, but iridescent kind of look from the paint that I thought looked pretty dang slick. So I might be using that going forward because as you already heard in the beginning of the video, this segment did not turn out fully as expected in the hopes of not <laughs> ruining more models on purpose so you don't have to i did try to conduct some proper tests this time and it was all thanks to michael over in the comments of the first video who inspired me to get try a couple different techniques to emulate the pattern while not using plastic cement this time around the first thing he mentioned was well not the first thing in the comments but the first thing i tried that he did mention was using green stuff, specifically liquid green stuff, to paint a thin layer of that on and try and make an impression that way. It's a little bit slicker than the cement. I could perhaps make a deeper impression, so I, I gave it a try. The first time I did it, I tried pressing with um, a, a just watered thumbprint, and as you can see, it didn't really seem to do all that much. Then I took a slightly drier thumb and tried it again with a bit more pressure, trying to do it evenly. And most of the green stuff ended up on my thumb, as green stuff is wont to do, being a very sticky substance. And this left just the imprinted, or just the gaps, rather, between the thumbprints left in the green stuff still on this piece of plastic. Now, Something is very interesting about this, and I think it is a point of failure that I did not discover when I was doing my dry brushing over the initial path. You see, a thumbprint is not a hard-edged surface. It's rounded. It's, it's kind of got a bunch of little humps to create its structure and pattern. However, if I'm imprinting a thumbprint into that, the shape we get is the reverse. So a bunch of kind of like little wave shapes. So it's really just a very sharp tip that if you were dry brushing it correctly, that would get picked up. But what is more likely to happen is that the dry brush has a lot more surface area with which to pick up the middle parts and kind of make the effect a lot more messy. Whereas if I were getting a proper, not negative impression of a thumbprint, uh, the dry brush should be able to go over the top and leave the much larger gaps visible with a more consistent patterning. That is just how imprinting things works. Unfortunately, with my thumb, I can only imprint things 
in the wrong way. <laughs> I would have to make a negative of my thumbprint and then use that to imprint on the model in order to get the right type of impression. And I think there might be a way to do it with like thermoplastics or something like that, but that sounds kind of painful. And I don't know if I really want to keep going down <laughs> this road. I, I gotta make these dudes at some point. Anyway, the second uh, attempt at doing this in this video is by just doing it like you would normally take a thumbprint. No texture involved, no imprinting, just a little bit of paint. And I tried this dabbing off most of the paint uh, on, a, on a paper towel and rolling it across the figure. And I was getting some decent prints, others that were not as clear, some that were a little bit messy. It, it was working to a degree, but it wasn't looking intentional. <laughs> it was a little bit too chaotic, a little bit too messy, and it ended up just looking like a mistake instead of a nice, cool pattern. And I think this is just me being uneven with the amount of paint I was using, uneven with the pressure I was applying on the model with my thumb. There, there's a variety of factors here that could be contributing to it. Could I practice it a lot and maybe get really good at leaving a clean thumbprint on a model? Maybe, but it's a lot easier to take your prints on a flat surface, which is why I presume police stations do it that way instead of on a sculpt of a Dalak ganger. So, is it possible? Yeah, it might be with enough practice. Do I want to devote that much time to it? Not specifically at this current moment because, well, I want to learn how to play Necromunda. <laughs> That's kind of the whole point of this. And right now, I'm just being completely blocked by not having a paint scheme. The other problem I noticed with this was that it was hard to get the different prints to match together in a way that looked like one contiguous pattern instead of just a bunch of random prints all over the model. So that wasn't the only issue. It was the connection of them. My thumb is only so big, it can only make so big of a print before I would need to go over it or or try and connect it with another print in a way that like wouldn't really connect in an intentional looking way. So there's a lot of challenges with this entire process. So I think I'm unfortunately going to have to ditch the thumbprint concept, even though it is really cool. Maybe down the line I can revisit it when I'm a much more skilled hobbyist and have time to intricately uh, sculpt these models with like a scoring tool or something like that to create a, a a pattern that is intentional and contiguous and has the same effect but today is not that day i am still quite a novice at the hobby and world all things considered so what am i going to end up doing well let's go back to those shifter paints because to be honest i think i'm kind of onto something there there's a light sort of aquatic theme with the iridescent appearance of it, so I'm thinking I might apply that to the armor plates of the Delac Gangers and then use some sort of dark cloak color. They're stealthy boys. I feel like I gotta make them go dark in some form, so maybe like a dark purple or a dark blue even. Still kind of figuring it out, still kind of playing with what I think might look good with these shifting colors. But I think like a bright teal shifting into purple would be like a really cool effect for the semi-aquatic kind of deep ones, dreamers, kind of dreamlike stuff going on in that it's like an actual physical optical illusion. And it's, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of what fish do in the ocean anyway. It's just a cool effect. One other pattern I think would be super cool to apply to their cloaks in the painting process is the pattern of shifting riverbed stuff. What is that called? I learned the word for this recently from a, a Corridor Crew video I was watching about VFX. Caustics are a physical phenomenon. Caustic. Thank you, Ren. 
Anyway, caustics are kind of the appearance of flowing water refracted to the bottom of a riverbed or something like, or some other below water surface as the light hits waves and creates these shifting patterns. That'd be a really cool thing to paint. Am I good enough to do it? Probably not at this scale. <laughs> and it and it truly looks the best when actually animated, so yeah, something to think about, but I'm not 100% sold on my ability to make that a reality, just yet at least. But something else that could be cool conceptually, a lot more aquatic and a lot more leaning into this like weird unsettling presence of something that shouldn't be happening, but is on their cloak. So I have a couple of jumping off points, but I think I'm at a place where I can at least start some test paints and test schemes to see how these guys should actually look when they're you know, put together a little bit more. And it also should unblock me from actually constructing these models if I'm not going to be physically altering their molds as I was originally planning to. Anyway, this does mark a truly exciting point in the journey to Necromunda. Road to Necromunda, remember the name of your own series, always a pro tip. And I am truly excited to see where these guys end up in the grand scheme of things because it's 10 guys, I wanna make them look really good. And I, you know, I think I can. But until next time, make sure to leave a like if you <laughs> enjoyed me bumbling through this experiment and leave a comment about your own journey to Necromunda. If you're playing the game, if you're a veteran, let me know a little bit about your history there in the comments below. And as always, for continued Necromunda reporting, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. And until next time, peace.